Okay, brilliant. Uh, Bru, if you'd like to take it away. Thanks very much. Okay, so thank you for inviting us. Uh, it is Aida Martinez and Bru Lain. Uh, Aida uh, used to work by the Catalan government as a data analyst in the, in the UBI pilot project office, which depends on the on the ministry of of the presidency of the Catalan government and I myself I am a lecturer uh, in sociology at the University of Barcelona and I used to work as well by the same office for for the first stage of the of the of the pilot project mostly during the its design phase so Ida it's gonna introduce the the main characteristics of the project and then I will uh, join her in explaining some other details. Aida? Well, hello everyone. Sorry about the problems with my connection. Um, can you hear me now? Okay, more or less. More or less, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, Bru and I thought that it was interesting for you to uh, not only listen about um, the design itself of the pilot, but also what happened before and after in the context and political um, scenarios that um, have a lot with what happened actually with the pilot project and how it was the design. So um, I'm going to speak about the economic context in Catalonia, what led us to Think that the Catalan UBI pilot was interesting um, um, public policy, and um, I will explain the design itself of the pilot, and then we will be going on with the political background and the popular support that uh, happens currently in Catalonia. So, can you pass this slide, please. So. Catalonia is a region in Spain, uh, which uh, has a population of almost 8 million people, and the unemployment rate is close to 10%, and the at risk of poverty um, rate is uh, 20%. Um, it has been like that for uh, almost 20 years now. The the percent uh, Also, um, Another point of view to think about the UBI context in Catalonia is when we speak about the, the conditional benefits that actually exist in Catalonia and also in Spain, not the pilots, but the actual benefits that are the most generalized ones, which is the IMV, the Ingreso Minimum Vital in Spain, and the RGC, Renda Garantia Ciudadanía in Catalonia. So just to uh, put as an example, we thought it was interesting to show you the average monthly amount that these benefits uh, bring to a single adult household. The poverty threshold in 2022, because those are the newest data available for an only adult household and the coverage rate of these benefits. So as you can see, the average monthly amount for the world of the IMB is not even higher than that. While for Spain, the poverty threshold is for one adult and four euros a month. So even if you manage to get there, you can even get close to surpass the poverty threshold in Spain. And also in Catalonia, if we think about data specifically for Catalonia, we have that uh, average monthly amount of charges is uh, around 700 euros a month for a single adult. While the poverty threshold in Catalonia, it's around 980 euros a month. So this means that even if you are one of the lucky ones to get these benefits, then I'll be even close to uh, not be considered for in Catalonia or Spain. So the coverage rate is very low, uh, given the fact that, um, oh, sorry, you, you cannot understand me well because of the connection I think. Uh, Aida, sorry to interrupt Okay, I'm you. going to shut down my camera to see yeah. if you can, let's let's try it like this. Uh, can you listen to me better now? 
hope so. It sounds much better, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'll keep it like that. So, yeah, that was the like the summary of the context in Catalonia, leading the UBI to gain um, uh, a lot of um, importance in, in the movement of uh, bettering the social benefit system. Because uh, when we talk about the amount of money given, it's very low, the average the coverage is very low and, and so on and so on. Um, also, as you can see in this graph, um, the bad situation due to the social transfers not being able to tackle poverty and the amount of people living under the poverty threshold being so high is not something that has happened, uh, I don't know, since the pandemic or on the last five years, it's something that has been quite constant since 2004, at least. So it means that um, we need to have um, innovative solutions due to the impossibility of the um, this context to to be solved with the current benefits. Broken. So yeah, my turn now. So just a glance on these two graphs. Uh, the first is referring to the our labor market. Well, we um, the Spanish and the Catalan labor market situation, and the bottom one it's about uh, the how social security is performing. Uh, so the first, just a glance, as I said, uh, we are suffering. Let's say they used as verb. We are suffering a very very dual job market. So that it uh, confronts insiders by, uh, to outsiders. And now referring to the top, to the bottom uh, graph, we are uh, benefiting from a, a quite contributory social system in which winners and losers are also um, counterposed or uh, uh, um, um, are opposed, let's say. So just I just highlight the 98%, 98 0.6% uh, uh, those um, population in, in social exclusion or in risk of social exclusion by type of household income. So you can see here that those uh, families uh, who are uh, who only uh, which only um, was only income came from non-contributory benefits including uh, granted minimum income schemes, they are suffering uh, um, very much. So in comparison with those uh, uh, only receiving contributory benefits, meaning unemployment uh, and, 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 pension, um, and pension benefits, who are just uh, experiencing less than 20% of uh, social exclusion. So it means that our GMI uh, protection system, it's not working anymore. And it's not more working anymore, uh, particularly for those who are outsiders uh, referring to, to the labor market. So this is the, the main socioeconomic uh, context in which our, our uh, pilot has been uh, designed. So Aida? And to follow with the, the presentation, um, the main aspects of the Catalan UBI pilot project were um, the amount being sufficient, so, um, we thought that, um, well, now the poverty threshold, it's close to 1,000 euro a month, but when it was designed, it was more, it was closer to 800 euros a month. And that's why we decided the amount to be 800 euros a month for an adult and 300 euros a month for a minor. That's because of the um, economies of scale in the household. The target population also was very innovative um, um, compared to other pilots because it was close to universal. Um, we didn't want to target one specific population such as unemployed people or, I don't know, artists and so on. We wanted it to be as close as a UBI uh, would be if it was a public policy and not a pilot. That's why we went for a quasi-universal experiment. I'm saying quasi-universal because we were excluding uh, the top 10% people um, regarding their income. This is uh, because um, the office uh, follows and believes in a UBI uh, that is mainly funded by a progressive tax reform in which the top 10% rich people wouldn't be 
a net benefit uh, and it um, wouldn't be beneficiating beneficiating net from the from the policy. That's why we excluded this ten percent. But on the other ninety percent, we didn't um, think about any other condition. The land was quite uh, was going to be quite uh, innovative too. It was twenty four months because we wanted to see some sort of uh, results that were not very needed. And also the sample was very um, high compared to other pilots. It was going to be 5,000 uh, people receiving the cash transfer. And the design itself was um, two-folded uh, design because we wanted to learn different outcomes that had to be tackled in two different ways. So these 5,000 participants were going to be divided into two samples of 2,500 uh, participants each. Uh, the first sample was going to be uh, an experiment um, designed as an RCT, so one of the most classical ways of conducting a pilot on UBI, in which uh, we were going to um, randomize these 2,500 people across the entire territory of Catalonia. One of the innovative ways of doing it was by not uh, having the individual as the randomization unit, but the household. So in that way, we wouldn't be um, randomizing 2,500 people, but 1,000 households, because the mean um, household in Catalonia is 2.4 uh, people. And in that way, um, what we want was to learn about the intra-household relationships and more like um, gender outcomes or gender related outcomes and so on. And the other part of the sample, the other 2,500 participants, we're going to be um, participating in a saturation study. So um, we wanted to do, to conduct a saturation study because we wanted to know what happens when an entire community receives the UBI or the cash transfer. Uh, we couldn't, um, managed to do so with the RCT, so that's why we separated the experiment into two designs. The saturation study, we wanted to, we, we designed um, the pilot to happen in two different municipalities of around uh, 1,300 uh, inhabitants each municipality. And uh, the innovative part of this part of the design was a how we were going to build the counterfactual, the counterfactual. So it was going to be built as a synthetic control group. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I will be happy to explain more later if you have any questions. But uh, to have it be, to summarize it uh, very very shortly, um, we decided to have like a four or five different outcomes aggregate outcomes, of course, um, regarding health, education, social um, services, and so on. And we had a lot of years of those outcomes for every municipality in Catalonia, which we have 947 municipalities. And with the very uh, short list of limitations, such as obviously the number of inhabitants of this of every municipality, because we had a budget constraint to do so. Um, we managed to get uh, like the optimum couple of municipalities that could be compared to a synthetic municipality constructed with the indicators of um, the rest of the municipalities. So in the end, what we would have won, very summarized, sorry. Um, in the end, what we would have had is um, the two municipalities with the treatment implemented and two uh, synthetic municipalities built from the rest of municipalities, but um, in a, with different ways to manage to um, put the two municipalities with the treatment, but without the treatment. And yeah, I will be happy to explain more after if you have any questions, but that was our design. And just to summarize and leave bro for the rest. Um, I think, and we have been um, congratulated by doing so, that this design, it's very innovative in the design, in what outcomes can we achieve to learn about with this design specifically, 
because most of the pilots before have been only focused on our cities, so no community or aggregate effects or saturation studies only, so no, no, not, no extrapolating results could be done to a bigger territory. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Aida. Very, very, very short. Uh, just to highlight some some of the features that Aida has has explained. Um, our aim was to to you know to tackle some of the main questions raised by by the UBI by a conventional UBI as I mean uh, what's going on with the individu individuality of a of a of a of a pure. UBI definition. This is covered by most of the current and the past basic income experiments uh, conducted through our RCT model, mainly because they are based on individual or household basis. But beyond that, we were also interested in responding some questions uh, raised by not solely by the individuality of UBI, but also um, uh, raised by its uh, universality and unconditionality. So by grasp or by capture, some of the effects arise by universality. The only methodological way to perform that or to get that that th those those uh, results is by conducting a saturation a saturation study. Thanks to which we can capture we, we can grasp, as I said before, um, uh, community and aggregate effects. But we are we were. We were and we are still are interested in capturing some institutional effects which are missed from most of the UBI pilot projects. I'm meaning uh, effects on, for instance, on how uh, public schools, primary schools, or high, uh, um, yeah, primary schools or police offices or municipal social services are performing uh, better or worse thanks to a UBI. Uh, implemented in uh, in the whole municipality. So the question or the main questions were, okay, for instance, um, those uh, or will uh, police officers will be uh, performing their work more comfortable thanks to having a you know a, a whole universal or whole municipal basic income or for instance how primary teachers are performing their work, how are they treating their students. How are they organizing their own work, et cetera, et cetera, thanks to having a, a huge or a, a whole municipal basic income. So that's where that's our questions, which are partially or absolutely non-response, nor responded by by other um UBI pilot projects. And that's why our pilot, at least we we pretty uh we are pretty sure about that. Uh, our pilot will be or would be able to respond at least partially. So beyond the the technicalities and the scientific models, etc., we would like to stress some some issues on the political background or the political situation which are affecting the most the experiment right now. So just a glance on the historical and slash political track, which are quite important as well to to frame the how we um we we ended up with this with this experiment the spanish basic income network was created in 2000 uh, uh, 2001 so it means more than 20 years ago in 2002 esquerra republicana which is uh, independentist uh, social democrat party which is now in the presidency and iniciativa per catalunya which are you know former communist party submitted a proposal to the Catalan parliament to, to, to pass a UBI law. One year after that, the new left-wing oriented government in Catalonia uh, passed a law in which uh, the fifth article said uh, uh, they were willing to uh, redefining the guaranteed minimum income scheme, aiming to turn it in a UBI while studying the different proposals for its progressive implementation. So these three parties, those who were uh, molded up to get the, the presidency uh, in 2003, were committed to explore, let's use this, you know, bluer word, let's say, to explore the chances to get or to make some advances towards a, a pure basic income. So in 2011, the, the Indignados movement, the Ocupadas movement, the Occupy movement, et cetera, was exploiting out uh, and including, or one of one of the most claims they were 
um, they were claiming during the Occupy movement were to establish a pure or a conventional UBI in the country. So a few years after that, in 2014, the first micro simulations on the UBI economic feasibility were uh, conducted both in Spain and Catalonia. So they gave, they, they, they um, represent a huge impact uh, among public opinion and scholars as well because they were the first, the very first time that these uh, economic micro simulations were performed with, you know, quite <clears throat> reliable data from the Spanish tax agency. So it means that they were quite robust in scientific terms. So on these students, uh, these research have been uh, updated uh, since, since then on in order to, you know, to capture the economic feasibility, not uh, 10 years ago, but also right now. So uh, during the COVID crisis, the UBI was also promoted by obvious reasons. Uh, we were collecting or we were getting some supports, not from different uh, social uh, movements or political uh, activism spheres, but also from social workers, institutions, from uh, NGOs, from different platforms uh, related with social care, practitioners, etc. Uh, precisely because of the of the socioeconomic consequences of the of the COVID uh, crisis, so and we ended up in two thousand twenty one, just a couple of years ago, in which the new president of the of the Catalan uh, government, uh, uh, which was Esquerra Republicana once again, supported by the CUP. CUP is the independentist far left oriented uh, political party were um, agreed in 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 putting the Esquerra Republicana uh, in the presidency on the country, including within the agreement, including uh, the the prospects of running a UBI pilot in the in the country. So in to, in December two thousand twenty one, the office was created uh, within the ministry of the presidency, and just few months after that, uh, the official decree was launching the pilot officially, let's say. This is the, you know, just in a glance, the historical track. And this is the political background, which is the Burberry, uh, important right now because it explains where we are right now. I've just introduced um, this graph, uh, letting you know about the uh, parliamentary distributions, uh, uh, distribution of vote in Catalonia. This is the actual parliament. Uh, the PSE, this is the, the Socialist Party, this is the Spanish Socialist Party as well. They are unionist and red social um, or labor, let's say. Esquerra Republicana, the presidency right now, which are independentist and more left uh, social democrat oriented. Uh, Junts, which was the former nationalist, uh, center right and even conservative party. So then we have Vox, which are absolutely unionist and fascist. Then the coup, the one supporting the government and those claiming uh, running the experiment during this uh, uh, um, 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 uh, presidency. Uh, they are pure independentist and very far left oriented. Then we have En Comú Podem, which are for foreigners, this is the Podemos uh, a Spanish party. They are not independentist, neither uh, nationalist. They are more federalist and left oriented as well. And then we have Ciudadanos, which are unionist and liberal. And then the, the, uh, the, the Populars Party, which are the same in Spain, Popular Party. They are unionist, far right and conservative. So the point uh, explaining wh where we are right now is these three main uh, data, March 2023, September and November. In March 2023, the Socialist Party, the Catalan Socialist Party, urged the parliament to defund the pilot project. So they achieved that. So that means that uh, the project was still ongoing, but defunded. So it virtually, it was virtually ongoing because without funding, uh, the project was not um, able to, to, to be performed. Um, we got in favor, we got the votes for sure of Esquerra Republicana, the ones in the presidency, those supporting them, the coup, the independentist far, uh, far, um, uh, far left, and En Comú Podem, Podemos, which are also, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, interested in the in the in running the experiment. 
uh, in front of the Socialist Party, the main, the main party uh, urging the parliament to defund the pilot, the Popular Party, Junes, Ciudadanos, and Vox. So after uh, having achieved to defund the project, uh, the pilot project in September 2023, the PSC as well uh, again urged the parliament to do not run the pilot. They achieved that. So, but it was quite virtual because by having it defunded, it means that the pilot was not able to uh, being implemented. So, and finally, we ended up in this November, just a couple of months ago, in which again, the Socialist Party, the Catalan Socialist Party, urged the parliament not just to defund or to stop the, the, the running the, the pilot project, but to cancel the very office in itself. They didn't achieve it, or they achieved it partially because the parliament had uh, ended up to uh, stating or, or having two different statements. One, to uh, urging the, the, gover the government to cancel the office, and the other one, which is quite a uh, mess, uh, to do not cancel the office. So the office is still in place, and it is, uh, in its, it is now um, debated which would be or which will be their functions, whether they are just focusing on the UBI pilot or they are including or assuming new responsibilities, for instance, assessing the GMI schemes, uh, researching on the poverty uh, dynamics, etc. So the office is still in place, but it's still, but it uh, it's been defined what uh, which were uh, they 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 new functions or they future functions. So now we are jumping to the last point, the popular support, the social support. Uh, what the, the point that we would like to stress the most here is that it seems to be, well, it's not to seem, it, there is a huge difference or divergences between institutional, political uh, functioning and popular support or popular opinion. As we have seen here, uh, the blocks against and in favor are quite static and they are quite obvious. Uh, but this is not reflected on the surveys that we have been performing for the last the last year. Particularly, we perform a huge uh, survey on UBI um, um, opinion, uh, the, the 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 sample of this survey was about 3,100 individuals, which is a huge uh, survey and which was a, a pure public funded survey, so it's quite robust and quite consistent in, in, in scientific terms. So we just want to stress three, three of its main uh, results. The first is uh, whether people is supporting the UBI implementation, uh, the implementation of a real UBI policy. So uh, the, the mean, the mean of, of support is about 6.5 uh, points, which is quite, quite high, uh, particularly in considering uh, those parties uh, who were, you know, institutionally speaking or in the parliament, uh, they are absolutely opposed to uh, basic income policies. So even the, the Socialist Party, which is, as I said before, the main party against or attacking, literally attacking the office, the pilot and the UBI in itself, even the Socialist Party um, um, voters are uh, above the man of 6.5 uh, points in supporting the basic income. So, so the, the support of basic income for a UBI implementation, for a, a real UBI implementation, it's quite consistent across different parties, although there is a correlation between more left oriented to, um, to supporting the most basic income and less or more far right oriented um, in parallel with less support for basic income, but even though the mean it's quite consistent, 6.5% again. So now we have seen uh, support of conducting the pilot, not introducing the policy, but conducting the pilot. So this is quite uh, surprising as well, because the support is even, even higher than implementing a UBI pilot, a, a UBI, a real UBI policy, so people is supporting uh, more uh, conducting a pilot before or previously to implementing a, 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 a real UBI policy. But the, the most surprising thing here in this graph is that even the support 
for for conducting a po a, a, a UBI pilot is even is even high and surprisingly high even within the uh, parties um, um, or uh, right wing oriented parties like the Socialist Party, like the Partido Popular, and even Vox, Unionist and Fascist, and even extremely conservative, even those uh, voters uh, are quite interested in conducting a pilot, um, whether we are then afterwards implementing the policy or not, just taking into account or just focusing on conducting a pilot, even those voters are quite interested in conducting a pilot. So there is it seems to be a, a huge contradiction here again between what the parliament is saying and what the you know the general public opinion is saying. And the last graph, it's quite illustrative as well. This is the support for the UBI characteristics, meaning the individuality, the unconditionality, and universality. As most of you would know, unconditionality is the most controversial or would be one of the most controversial features of UBI for obvious reasons. So while well, individuality and universally are, you know, um, getting or, or grasping a huge, a huge support, we are saying that in a great in aggregate terms, those who are rather positive or rat or even uh, quite positive in the individuality feature, they are um molding up this 60 to 70 uh, 70 so it's quite high that's the same or pretty the same results are uh, regarding universality with those um uh, located uh, between rather positive or even positive are mounting 66.5 percent which is quite high so the problem, let's say, or the, the most controversial uh, feature is the unconditionality, which is just, let's say, just uh, reaching as uh, 50, even almost 50, 53% of, of support. So it means it, it would be connected with different, you know, a Catalan and cultural and historical feature of, of, of Catalonia. For instance, we are a country, a, you know, a Catholic, historical Catholic uh, background, whether you know people are more sympathetic with uh, contributory logics rather than unconditional logics, uh, where you know labor participation is a you know it's a virtue or it's something which is quite quite um, uh, quite um, um, how can I say it uh, quite um, uh, is raising quite a support rather than unconditional policies and so forth. So uh, even though even uh, unconditionality it's it's getting the the you know minus support in comparison of uh, with individuality on universality, the three main features uh, features of UBI are reaching more than fifty percent, even uh, um, um, uh, pretty more than fifty percent of of popular support. So we are, or we can be quite quite optimistic in that in that uh, with that prospects. So I think that we are done. This is the the official link, uh, the web page, and the Twitter account. If you want to get some more information, you can get you know the scientific committee, the advisor committee, um, the governance structure of the pilot, uh, the numbers, etc. You can download the full uh, experimental design report. Uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we are inviting you to visit the web page and to get the as much information as you need. And now the floor is open, and we would be glad to answer your uh, your questions, your comments, or even your critics as well. So thank you. Brilliant! That was absolutely amazing presentation, giving us a really, really interesting insight into what's gone on in Catalonia and some of the challenges uh, that they've been there's been there. Um, are there any questions? I've got a number of questions that I would like to ask myself, but um, I won't abuse the chair's privilege. And just mm -hmm. wondering if anyone else has a question first uh, that they would like to ask. Reinhard, if you'd like to ask your question. Uh, yes, thank you again for the very interesting presentation to both uh, Aida and Bru. Um, I have got actually three questions. I'll keep it short. One is, 
in your presentation, you spoke some said something about inclusion and exclusion of workers, and I don't quite understand what is the what are the criteria to say inclusion or exclusion. What what does it actually mean? Mm -hmm. That's my first question. The second one is about the economic feasibility study. What was actually studied in in this economic feasibility st uh, study or assessment? Is it the financing or the economic impact of uh, uh, basic income? And the third one, I would like to find out more about the reasons why the Socialist Party group cancelled it. What were the actual reason given uh, that it should not be conducted? Because, I mean, uh, even if you are against it, as you put it, point it out, it may be then interesting to find out that it's not working. So why were they opposed to have it actually, uh, to have, it, have the study actually implemented, especially as it seems to be just five minutes before starting time or so starting the, the last minute sort of blockade. Thank you. Sorry, I, so I hope I didn't abuse my questioning, asking three questions at the same time. Thank you. Uh, do you want to take those questions first, especially given there's three, I guess, um, Brew or Ida, do you, either of you want to go? Yeah. Okay, Ida, would you like to respond or? I, I honestly think they're more targeted to you, but. Um, okay, okay so, so I'm going ahead. So then about inclusion exclusion, um, maybe it was not clear enough in our explanation. What we are saying is that uh, I'm looking for the... Uh, Sorry, the the proper the proper uh, slide. Uh, I Rainer Hart, I'm 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 assuming that you are referring to this to this uh, slide. We are not excluding or including people regarding their labor status. We are just excluding the richest ten percent of the population, trying to emulate or replicate a real uh, UBI tax reform uh, output. My, so, my understanding was he was asking about insider outs. You know, in the previous slide, you're talking about I, insiders and outsiders. I, 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 I didn't. I may may have said exclusion, but I meant insider outsider. That was what not quite clear. Sorry. I mean, oh, sorry. I, sorry. I, I think this was about this insider outsider, which I didn't quite. Oh, yeah, understand. sure. Insiders, yeah, they are insiders versus outsiders. I didn't sure. quite understand what this meant. Sure. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Sorry. I, I would like to be very briefly on that because this is not the, the main point of our presentation, but I, I, even though um, I think that to in order to understand why the pilot project is it's, it's popping up right now and not you know 10 years ago or even 10 years afterwards, it is because or it is mainly because the, uh, the, 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 the job market situation and the social system, uh, uh, situation. So on the one hand, we have a job market, or uh, sorry, a job uh, 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 labor market, which is quite di internally divided. On the one hand, we have people who are could be considered insiders, those who have you know full time job, those who have been employed for let's say thirty years, something like that. It is quite consistent with with uh, um, 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 age uh, dynamics. People who are older, they are used to be. They are usually those who are considered outsiders because they have been working on the same job place for a long time. They are covered by um, uh, labor uh, uh, unions, um, uh, politics. They are uh, unionizites as well. They are quite protected for labor market policies. They are benefiting from rising salaries, etc. So they Those can be considered the outsiders, uh, sorry, the insiders the ones benefited the most from the labor market. And in front of them, on the other hand, we have the outsiders, which could uh, grouping, uh, you know, young people, females, uh, migrant people, uh, single, um, single mothers, for instance, those less educated population, et cetera, et cetera. Those who are getting into and getting out uh, from the labor market constantly, those who are, you know, getting the words or the the most precarious job places, etc. So those who are not usually unionized, and precisely because of that, those who are not benefiting from uh, from uh, more progressive, let's say, uh, labor policies, etc. So the one of the particularities, or one of the most illustrative particularities of the both Spanish and Catalan labor market, it, it is quite a dual job market counterposing insiders and outsiders. So other labor markets, other national labor markets are much more integrated. 
So the Spanish one and the Catalan one as well, it's quite divi internally divided between these two different groups. So that would not be necessarily a huge uh, problem or problematic. While you know our social system is performing or it's mostly performing for in favor of outsiders, but the particularly the, or the most particularly and the most uh, problematic issue with the social system it is that it is quite contributory oriented. So precisely those who, who can be considered insiders, they are those protected the most for the social uh, by the social systems, meaning that they are those receiving unemployment, unemployed, and uh, pension or retirement pensions as well. So those who are outsiders or can be considered outsiders from the labor market, they are absolutely disprotected for from social uh, uh, by social system or by yeah you know, yeah for social system. Why? Because those are uh, they are the, the only uh, uh, they are those receiving only non-contributory benefits because they have no uh, they have had no the chances to pay taxes in order to get uh, retirement and unemployment benefits. So they are only protected by non-contributory or um, assistance benefits like the GMI guaranteed minimum incomes. So and that's why I was highlighting or marking the only non-contributory benefits in the bottom graph, uh, trying to stress the fact that those who are the outsiders from the labor market, uh, they are those who are supposedly the most benefit from our social systems, but in fact, they are the less benefited or the, the less protected uh, by our social systems because once again, it is quite contributory oriented. So those who have no, who had had not the chances to get into the labor market, they are those who are just receiving non-contributory benefits, and they are ninety-eight percent in social exclusion. So it means that non-contributory benefits, those cash transfers, directly focusing on the outsiders from the labor market, they are not working to get people outside uh, to get people out of poverty. So that's a quite dramatic thing because we are excluding people, our labor market is excluding people. These people should be those targeted by our social system, but in fact, it is not what's going what's going on really. Because social system, it's only it's really only protecting the insider from the labor market. That's the that's the the, the main point. So and that's why a lot of people here, practitioners, social workers, etc., were claiming for the last three, four, five years, uh, we are claiming for a new uh, rationale of our uh, social system towards more universal and towards more unconditional because conditioned and means-tested benefits are not working, or at least they are not working for uh, those excluded from labor markets, which are those, the words of our society. So regarding your second question, the economic feasibility uh, studies, which we have just referred uh, here, um, sorry, uh, here, yeah, in 2014, uh, yeah, this uh, research were focusing on the how a, uh, a pure UBI could be founded uh, in both in Spain and Catalonia, and in order to assess that economic feasibility, uh, two million of uh, tax uh, forms were used, official tax returns. Uh, uh, forms were used in order to be more realistic, let's say. We are not including uh, taxes coming, coming from tax havens, for instance. We were not using or we are, we were not including or considering other taxes from wealth, for instance, or carbon taxes or etc. We just was, we were just considering um, 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 income taxes. So by using 2 million uh, tax uh, return uh, forms, we demonstrated that economy, uh, UBI of about seven, between 700 and 800 euros per month per adult is economically, uh, economically feasible. And the third question was the reasons why the Socialist Party is against. That's the main question. I have different and even plenty responses to that question. The main one is that first, uh, during the COVID crisis in 2020, 
the Spanish Socialist Party was uh, um, 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 passed a law introducing the first Spanish basic in, um, uh, minimum income scheme, the Ingreso Minimo Vital, which were which was absent up to then uh, uh, across the whole uh, Spanish kingdom. So until then, the minimum income schemes were uh, regional competences. So we are we were lacking for from a national a Spanish a minimum income scheme. So that was the first time. So they were quite pro. The government, the Socialist Party, was quite pro of passing that law and introducing the first national level uh, minim uh, warranted minimum income scheme. So precisely because of that, they are quite reluctant to accept that a regional government and even a pro-independentist regional government are conducting is conducting an experiment, you know, potentially demonstrating the lacks or the shortcomings or the limitations or the boundaries of you know a conventional minimum income scheme. So that's why they were quite reluctant to accept uh, running a pilot, and that's why they are you know actively attacking the pilot and the office in itself because of that. That's my hypothesis. I'm not whether I'm wrong or not, but that's that could be quite 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 realistic. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Before I see if someone else has got um, another question, I just want to ask a, a, a technical thing about the, the the composition of the parliament. So did did it change such was was there an election between the start of the pilot and um, the Socialist Party cancelling the, the, the pilot? My understanding is there wasn't an election. So my question is, how did it pass originally? Who who agreed to the pilot originally who then changed their mind was it the so socialist party or or was it other parties that agreed to yeah. to fund it the yeah. first the, the the first government uh i mean the former government was created was was um um uh, a two two parties government the esquerra republicana the ones still now in the presidency and Junts per Catalunya, which were, you know, the former nationalist center right, which are turning independentists right now. So the the two central um, uh, figures, the the orange one and the blue and the blue one, they were forming the government. So, but one year and a half ago, the Junts per Catalunya were uh, uh, decided to get out of the government because, you know, internal reasons. So now the government is absolutely minoritary just run it by the Esquerra Republicana, supported by the CUP, the pro-independentist far left-oriented party. So that makes things even more complex because Junts per Catalunya, it's depending on this, on the, the parliamentary vote, they are supporting the opposition or they are, or they are supporting the party, the, the government, sorry. So it makes things even more complex. So originally the, the, the center-right party kind of agreed to the pilot as a compromise as part of the coalition sure. agreement well they they were accepting by you know um they were quite reluctant let's say yeah yeah, yeah. so it was a, it was like a, a something they gave away sure. that they then when they left so, the government they weren't happy the, to the, the to pilot has them. never been quite important for for uh, to them yeah they never take it into account or they they have never take it uh seriously because you know a pilot you know in the very end, it's not just it's, uh, something, a, a very important thing for, for them. Uh, okay. Uh, are there any other questions from the audience at all? Um, I had a, another question about, about the, uh, the maybe a slightly more pointed question about the kind of abandonment of, of the pilot, which is... Um, you know, the, 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 it's an amazing design. And in particular, I love the focus on, you know, randomizing households to look at intra um, household dynamics and having a saturation study, which really basically hasn't been done yet in kind of OECD countries. So both of those elements are, are, are fantastic and I think would have made a fantastic pilot. But they were also quite ambitious plans, right? I mean, so 5,000 people, you know, saturation studies, they have their kind of issues, which is why other places haven't haven't done them. So I guess my question is, to what extent do you think the ambitious design had some role to play in the fact that the pilot was eventually 
gutted? Would if you went for something a little less ambitious, do you think it would have, um, you know, they would wouldn't have targeted it quite as much? Hmm. May I? I guess that that's 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 my 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 question. <laughs> yeah, you're not the first one to ask us about this exact <laughs> um, topic. My personal opinion, and I think that maybe Bru agrees, is that it wouldn't have mattered that much because the main argument against the conducting of the pilot was the money. So the Socialist Party, what they stressed one time after another was, imagine what we could do with this amount of money if we don't invest it in the pilot and we invest it in other social um, policies. So even if we had said, okay, let's do it instead of uh, including 5,000 people, let's include half of them. So the uh, budget is way, it's half of, of what, what we needed. The argument for the Socialist Party would have still been the same. So imagine what we could be do doing with these 20 million euros, you know? So it was more um, strategic, strategic or ideological, if you want, than an actual argument, because if they wanted to negotiate, they would have said, okay, those are our red lines and you can like, change a little bit this, the design or reduce the sample or so on and so on. So uh, I personally don't believe that um, going for a less um, challenging uh, design would have mattered. And apart from that, well, not apart from that, but on top of that, being the design as innovative as, and as challenging as it is, we received uh, a lot of praising from the academia uh, international community and so on. So um, from the point of view of the office, like an institutional point of view was, the feeling was like, what else do you want um, for you to believe that this, this is not an ideological based uh, pilot, but a scientifically based pilot. That was very important for us. And even with those things taken into account, the Socialist Party didn't want to um, actually not conducted as it was, but not conducted at all. So I personally believe that if we if we said, okay, let's do it just for 500 people, they still would say no. That's my personal <laughs> experience with this topic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting because it, the I, I often think of this, this kind of some similarities between um the base kinker movement in catalonia and in scotland um in terms of you know it kind of being tied to a civic nationalist kind of project mm -hmm. to some extent you know i'm not saying that you, the only concern of base kinker advocates is like catalonian independence but then in some sense it is tied to that project but i think it seems like it's different than the scottish case because in the scottish case they knew their ambitious design would be rejected um mm. uh, and they kind of they went ahead with it anyway uh in a way that the welsh government for example they chose you know like a more targeted pilot they that they knew they could do um but it seems like in your case it's maybe similar more similar to the canadian context where you know just unlucky political <laughs> dynamics meant that the project ended rather than um you know being too ambitious or something that i mean that's that's what i'm getting from from your presentation and also your explanation there um, yeah. i don't know if you would agree but... and just, just to add uh just a, um a, a point of view of what uh bruce said before about the um when the coalition government broke it was decisive then because before um the coalition government broke the Socialist Party was always against the conducting, the conducting of the pilot, right. but we uh, still had the backing of Junes. So because they were in the coalition government, they always voted for uh, any norm or, or regulation that we needed to pass in order to continue with the pilot. Mm -hmm. It was when they separated from the government that they started to vote against uh, the pilot. It was mainly that because if they had been... Uh, if they if they still were in the government right now, we would be 
I don't know, on month six of the pilot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Reinhard, you had, you had a question as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the good explanation. I just have a follow up question for Brew. I mean, I suppose that the socialists didn't say we don't want our scheme to be discredited by this pilot. Uh, so what was actually, I mean, I suppose they must have uh, written some sort of document why they disagree with this pilot. And what were the reasons given in this document, the main reasons why they uh, said uh, they had to stop this pilot at the last moment? Mm -hmm. No, very, very briefly, there is no document at all from the Socialist Party stating their claims against uh, conducting experiment. Uh, actually, okay. they, they've been reluctant to answer our media notes, our public interventions, our scientific claims okay. as well, uh, the scientific board, the International Scientific Board of the experiment have, um, um, we actually uh, published a press a press note uh, saying that, okay, we are coming from different, you know, ideological spectrum. We are not necessarily in favor of a basic income scheme. We are actually not non uh, positioning ourselves in that regard, but we are actually positioning ourselves in favor of um, uh, evidence-based policy. So that's why this is quite important to conducting this kind of experiments and other as well. So we are not that we are we were asking to Socialist Party by saying we we have no idea what you are opposing to just a simple experiment through which we can grasp we can grasp some empirical um, um, empirical evidence, thanks to which we can, you know, discuss uh, quietly about your opinion, our opinion, and others' opinion regarding basic income. But we cannot discuss it properly without or or uh, without, you know, proper empirical evidence. And that's why we want to conduct the experiment. And that was our strategy. And we never get some, you know, proper response. You know, so just as I just say, up, as I just say another... it just it's just politics. It's just about ideology. It's not about science. It's not about opportunity yes. cost. Yes. It's not about feasibility, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's about politics. Can I, because of that, follow up? Because I listened to one discussion about the Ontario experiment, which was cancelled after sort of change of government, and there a researcher said in future, if such a decision is made. Uh, to conduct an experiment that it should be sort of fixed in a contract or legislation so that it cannot be changed afterwards with the sort of Nazaga, or it's very difficult to change it. Would you say the same for Catalonia if the uh, two parties had sort of made some legislation or contract that this pilot would go ahead, that it would have been much more difficult to just cancel it at the last moment? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we cannot get into comparison between, you know, Scotland or Ontario. But I think that the, the, the thing that most or almost all experiments are sharing is that they are not solely or they are not exclusively an a scientific device, which, which they are, of course, but they are also political devices. Um, rising, you know, political, media and ideological debates. None of them can escape from from that, from that, um, from that. So, and one other uh, another particularity that I think that most of all experiments are sharing is that experiments are quite useful in order to make the debate on basic income much much more clear, in the sense that why while non experiment it's forcing. Support for basic income, as Jürgen the Whispeller used to say, support for basic income, it's quite cheap. Even, I mean, this, this is what I said before in 2000, uh, in 2003, uh, even the Socialist Party was agreeing in, you know, in running towards uh, or converting the minimum income scheme into a pure UBI. 20 years after they changed their mind for different reasons, 
uh, for ideological, for socioeconomic reasons, for parliamentary reasons, whatever. But this is once the experiment is in place, the support for basic income is much more uh, expensive because experiment requires, necessary requires to clarify the debate. What the basic income is, which are the main features, which is the amount, how it's how it is supposed to be financed, uh, who it, who, it's, who is included and excluded, which uh, participants will be taking place, etc. In which municipalities or it is a re RSTT across the whole country, etc. All these kind of uh, features or particularities of experiment are required to cl uh, to clarify the debate on around basic income. And that's why the debate or support for basic income is more expensive when an experiment is in place rather than before that. And this is this I think this is a quite a common or shared feature across different countries where experiments have been conducted or partially conducted, like in Ontario, or non-conducted at all, like in, in Glasgow, for instance. Yeah, very interesting. I completely, completely agree with all of that. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Give it another opportunity if anyone does. Um, I had one question about the technical details of the pilot design, if that's if that's okay, which was um, around the... Uh, well, so my understanding was that there will be no taxes applied because the assumption is that there will be kind of redistribution right so the top 10 percent are excluded but the rest get it without any changes to their income tax right yeah but i was wondering what happens if let's say the top 10 percent lose their job uh or, the, or just drop below the 10 top 10 percent would they then be included in the scheme and vice versa if you're you know in the the, the 80th percentile and you you get a pay rise and go up to the 90th would you then get your basic income taken away or was it effectively a sampling strategy and then then it's you're you're either in or you're you're out and it and it's left left at that yeah that's it we wanted it to be a fixed picture um once we sample the the population it was going to be fixed like that because otherwise you end up in this logic of controlling every month uh, the income of everyone and it's it was uh it was going to give more problems than um solutions so we ended up thinking it was better for us to like fix um the sample once we had it brilliant thank you um so I guess I mean the obvious last question is what what next I mean what 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 is the <laughs> what is the current um Kind of political context for all of this i guess is has the office closed then now is it is it still is the office itself of the pilot still open um yeah it's still open and it's it is working right now it is still in place yeah um and, yeah sorry and 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 working towards towards what is it designing you know keep working on the pilot so that it potentially happens in the future or what is, is that the idea their main or its main um, um, uh, responsibilities right now uh, have been to promoting the experiment and making some, you know, public conferences and public lectures on UBI and pilots, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the first, both for the general public and within or internally for the government or for the institutional forces as well. You know, um, uh, teaching some um uh, politicians and public officers etc in what's uh, pilot is or what's it's what's the pilot is going on etc so that's the first day first uh, mandatory task the second one is to finishing the pilot the design because for instance there were some technicalities regarding how you know uh, participants were fiscally traded or traded from for by the social security so, for instance, those receiving unemployment benefits, what's going on with the benefits or with the minimum incomes? It's supposed that the minimum income re uh, they were receiving during the pilot was going to be frozen. So, this going to be or supposed going to be needs to be, you know, 
uh, seriously arranged by the social ministry, etc. And it's uh, that's a huge task, mm -hmm. uh, illegal and administrative and juridical terms. So this is still, you know, ongoing. Um, and now, not regarding the office in itself, but regarding, you know, the UBI movement in general terms, uh, I must say, to be honest, I'm quite mm -hmm. optimistic in the sense that the cancellation or, you know, yeah, the cancellation of the pilot has uh, promoted the idea of UBI across different, uh, a huge different ideological and social spectrum. So now there are more um labor unions supporting the idea there are more uh, uh practitioner organizations supporting the idea there are youth uh organization or platforms supporting the idea as well etc so during these last two years two and a half years different manifestos have been popping up supporting the idea most of them and i think this is quite important most of them they are not explicitly supporting the UBI policy in itself, but they are claiming to shift our social security rationale by saying, okay, we have to um, move from or shift from conditionality, means-tested um, 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 uh, logics or philosophy towards a more unconditional and non-means-tested um, uh, rationale. And I think this is a huge shift in historical and social and political terms. Although there are organizations who are not supporting the idea, the UBI idea, they are claiming for uh, making social security performance more unconditional, up to the point that the current minimum income scheme in Catalonia, it's, it's about to be redesigned in order to be compatible with um, 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 wages and salaries, that it was not not in the past mm. so i'm not pretty sympathetic because we are still talking about means tested and conditional benefit mm. but this is an historical shift mm. to to turn our minimum income uh, into something con uh, compatible with uh, wages and salaries i think mm. this is a huge step forward and i think this is partially because of the pilot it's just before I know Ron has a question, but just a quick um, question about whether the have the parties that were supporting the pilot. Do you think that they will go into the next election supporting it again, or do you think that ship has has sailed at this point? Well, electoral prospect says that the Socialist Party is about to win the elections in okay. one year time, something yeah, one year, mm -hmm. ten month time, something like that. Uh, because, you know, the independentist movement has, um, it's over, etc. for different dynamics. Mm -hmm. And the Esquerra Republicana would be the second, the second party. Uh, what is not quite clear is whether the Esquerra Republicana would be within the government or in the position. So that's not clear right now. But even though, even um, uh, regardless the position within or outside the government, I think the Esquerra Republicana is embracing the idea of unconditionality. Uh, so I quite optimistic in that terms. They were they used not to be so supportive of unconditionally or UBI before the pilot. And I think that they have experienced uh, an important shift towards unconditionality and basic income. So I'm quite optimistic in that terms that regardless they position within or outside the government, they will be still supporting the idea. Uh, Coop, the pro-independentist and far left oriented party will be the same and in Comupu them pretty the same as well. They are not quite enthusiastic. They are, you know, um, hairs, let's say, hairs of this kind of classic left oriented logic towards supporting, you know, labor effort and contributory logic etc but even though they are quite sympathetic so yeah that mm -hmm. would be the prospects let's take it reinhardt did you have another question yeah it's it's a follow-up because you mentioned scotland brew and i mean this is a scottish experiment it was at least clear to me that it could not take place without the approval of the central government. So that was a sort of already 
a trap which would uh, i mean the welsh did it much better in designing a sort of much less ambitious but uh, a, a sort of trial which can could be done without the approval or support of the central government now i understand and i don't know whether i'm correct that in your case in catalonia you do not need the support of the central government so regardless who is in power in madrid as long as catalonia is part of spain uh, they cannot interfere or stop uh, such an experiment through sort of various uh, administrative issues. Is, is, is the social security system quite independent in uh, in Spain in each region or so uh, from the central government? Aida, would you like to respond? Yeah. Um, so for the experiment, the central government in Spain didn't have anything to say for or against the how the Catalan government uses their budget. So if it was uh, decided by a majority in the parliament that the necessary money was targeted to conducting the experiment, um, the central government didn't have anything to say about it. Another thing is when we speak about taxes and um, these kind of things, or, or for example, um, combining different benefits, already existing benefits and so on. So in that regard, from the office, what we were doing was having regular talks with the representatives from the central government in order to be able to conduct the experiment as as nicely as possible with not not with the permission or not permission of the central government but with the negotiation and regular relations um ongoing with them mm -hmm. and in some things they were more prone to giving and in some other things they were more um um, um decided to to leave things as they were. But in general, uh, generally speaking, the design of the pilot was not very much um, affected by things regarding the central government. Yeah, thank you. Brilliant. Um, did anyone else have any last questions? We've got 10 minutes if we need it, but um, I think you've covered a huge amount there already um anyone for the last ones? did you did you two have anything you wanted to anything you felt like we hadn't we haven't covered or anything no brilliant well i think that leaves it for for this afternoon this evening um thank you both so much again for for a fantastic presentation and i, I think i speak for all of us when i say it's such a shame that the, <laughs> the pilot which was so well designed. You did some, some amazing work on it, just couldn't be implemented. I think we would have got some really, really fascinating results from it. Um, but glad that there is some kind of positive political effect, at least to, to move Catalonia in the direction of unconditionality in some way. I think in some ways they had a similar thing in, in Scotland. You know, they're working on a kind of minimum income guarantee. So even though the pilot didn't happen, they're, they're at least moving in a kind of, positive direction so hopefully this a similar thing happens in in catalonia as well um hopefully too <laughs> hopefully too. brilliant well thanks so much everyone mm -hmm. have a fantastic christmas to to everyone on the call and uh maybe see you next month for the for for the for the next show thank you very much thank you thank you guys for yeah. inviting us thank you bye. thank bye -bye. you thank you very interesting thank you bye-bye